Hi, in the previous mailbag video, David Voss kindly sent in this Sony Fixus IPS 360 GPS from 1991. It's an absolute uh, classic, and what I didn't mention in that video is that um, there is a fault with it. Um, so I thought we'd actually take a look at it, not really because I want to use this thing because it's like huge and... Well, it's not obsolete, it could still give you a GPS, uh, uh, you know, reading and things like that, but yeah, it's, <laughs> compared to today's modern GPS is what you can get in your phone or just a regular e-trex, Garmin e-trex or something like that from 15 years ago, it doesn't even compare. But I thought it'd be interesting to do some troubleshooting of this thing and see if we can get it working. Now the fault is I've got four AA batteries in there, I've got it all hooked up, here's the power switch on the side. And it should, yep, there we go, it goes beep, comes on, that's it, in the position mode, so you can see the corresponding uh, keys there, and we can put it in nav mode and stuff like that. But of course the fault is, is that we're getting absolutely nothing on the LCD there, and having a look at different angles, like, it, there's just not a thing there so um it seems to work apart from that uh because you know we're getting like a, a response uh the leds are changing it's beeping it means the process is working everything's doing just fine it uses a hitachi h8 uh process as we saw in the uh tear down in the mailbag it's got a xilinx uh, z80 series uh processor up in the main receiver up here but all that stuff's running on the h8 but nothing on the screen and usually these um lcd modules don't uh, die. So we've got a Senyo uh, chipset on the back. The first thing I did, of course, is reseat the flat flex cable, look, inspect for, you know, any broken uh, wires inside there and things like that. And I couldn't see anything. I haven't buzzed out every single connection over there for the flat flex, but um, yeah, I don't. It doesn't look like there's any issue there, so there's something else going on, possibly in terms of uh, the bias voltage for the LCD, perhaps that could have uh, failed, could be one of the LCD drivers failed, I hope not because I won't have uh, replacements for it, but anyway, let's go through troubleshooting step by step. Now the first thing I've done is just disconnect this uh, receiver, put that out of the way because that's not what we're focused on, just the processor and the LCD here. So I've repowered it up and it uh, basically, as you'd expect, without the receiver there it'll give you some sort of, sort of error, but multiple beeps, error, position mode, but it still goes between the various modes. And um, But it won't go back to position mode because, well, it knows that there's no receiver there. So anyway, it's still working, so I'd still expect to see something on the LCD with that uh, disconnected. Anyway, with that disconnected, we can take this uh, top board off here. That's got the uh, super cap on it for the battery uh, replacement. Looks like there's some power supply stuff here. Dead giveaway is, of course, the uh, large uh, traces coming in and out, cap either side. So they're going to have an input to bypass cap, output bypass cap. So that's probably a regulator. Might be another regulator package up there as well because we've got a big output uh, surface mount electrolytic uh, cap there. So, yeah, um, that looks like some power supply stuff. And, of course... The first rule of troubleshooting, thou shall test voltages. And it looks like there's a lot more power supply stuff here. I took this uh, top board off and there's nothing on the bottom there. So, but uh, here's our, um, it looks like we've got uh, a DC input uh, jack down here. And um, we've got a little transformer. So that's going to be some sort of switcher. And sure enough, that RF5RD part there, I uh, wasn't able to get a data sheet, but I think it's a Rico, and it appears to be a step-up uh, DC to DC converter with a uh, regulator. So yeah, that's what you'd expect under the transformer there. Now, nothing on there is immediately familiar, so yeah, I'm not going to attack that first. I'm going to do the easy stuff that I know. But what we are going to look for is the easy stuff, uh, the voltage test points first, if we can uh, find them. So let's have a look. Hello. That looks like we've got minus five volts there. Is that? Yeah, that's plus five, is it? And nothing else. Buzzer. 
Um, that's not going to help us. Oh, and by the way, you'll notice that minus 5 volts comes from this connector here, which was used to connect through to this board, and you might see something familiar, or I certainly do, a 7660 voltage inverter there, or a, a, a capacitor voltage inverter slash uh, doubler. So it's either doubling that, or uh, usually it's generating a negative um, uh, output. So that would explain plus 5 minus 5 going into that connector. So our negative is most likely going to be the negative of our battery over here. That one looks like a big fat ground down there. You bet your bottom dollar it is. So we can either probe it from there or from that point there, but it's not convenient, doesn't have a via, so you can't get your probe off there and it could slip. Ugh, just be careful. Trap for young players, don't want to short something out. Alright, so here we go. Let's power this thing up and we're going to measure... Oop, that's quite loud and... Uh, Disturbing. And let's measure our plus five. Yeah, our plus five is good. No worries. Minus five. Wah, 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 wah. So if we follow the money on that minus five volt rail there, it's no surprise. It's coming out there. There we go. It's coming out of our um, 7660 inverter. But hang on, before we go off half cot, we've got another couple of test points in here. This one's actually, I believe that's V-Dig, so that would be V-Digital, so that could be 3.3 or something like that. And this one in here has got the VRF, voltage reference, so that's pointing to that one in there. So I'm going to just have a quick measure of those two. We know our minus 5 volts isn't there, but our plus, sorry, our plus 5 is still there. So let's measure our voltage reference, 1.43, I don't know what it's supposed to be, but that's alright, there's something there. And V-Dig. Well, there's nothing on V-Dig either. Hmm. And you'll notice that V-Dig is also coming from this, oh, is it coming from that top board? No, here's the connectors, it's going to that. Oh, okay, yes, yeah, sorry, yes, it's going, no, that's going over to the uh, GPS um, uh, GPS receiver connector, so yeah, that could actually be on the GPS receiver, so we might plug that in and try it again. Yeah, and let's measure that again with the GPS receiver plugged in. Aha, VDIG is now 5.1 volts, no worries. So yes, my uh, hunch was correct. It needed this uh, receiver board plugged in before it would feed back, so that regulation's over on here, even though the test point is over here. So now the only thing we've got to trace is the one thing, one known fault we've got is the negative 5 volt rail. So back to that top board. Now the pin out of this 7660 voltage inverter here seems to be a bit strange because normally pin 8 is the power here and look we've got this big trace coming in to this uh, pin 7 and it and then we've got the, well our output here, that goes off to our cap. Okay, so that's no worries. It's going off to the negative of that cap, so that's normal. If the output was a negative uh, supply, that's exactly what you'd uh, expect to find. So that's okay, but then this comes back to pin 6 here. What's going on? And usually then there's a cap uh, between the switching cap. It's got 7660 on it. It's doing voltage inversion. It's got to be a 7660, but it's not... Don't doesn't look like the standard pinout. It's weird. Anyway, you could go crazy trying to reverse engineer that, and well, you don't have to. You're just chasing a red herring down a rabbit hole, probably. So we know that we're not getting our negative five volts. Well, what's the problem? Well, here's one. Here's our output cap. Could be our output cap. Could be our switching cap. Uh, perhaps I would suspect the caps over the uh, seven double six zero inverter there. Whatever the Hell pin out it is. So yeah, I would, um, first port of call is I would uh, suck those off and measure the value. Let's do the minus 5 volt output cap. Wah, 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 wah. 600 nanofarads. It's supposed to be 22 mic. Fail. So I replace that one there with a 22 mic cap and uh, we can measure the voltage across that. Wah. Still failed, so that cap was definitely dead, so we've replaced it, and uh, we're still not getting our negative uh, 5 volt 
rail out and I'll just show you that. Five volts in and we're getting exactly the same as before. So we found a dead cap, but uh, that is not it. Hmm, keep going. Suspect the other cap now. So I've sucked out the other one there, which I'm guessing is the switching cap. And it's supposed to be 10 mic. And 1.1 mic. So, yep, that one's dead too. I have to replace that. All right, let's try that one. I've replaced uh, the 22 mic cap and the 10 mic cap there uh, around that uh, weird R7660. And... <laughs> <laughs> winner, winner! Chicken dinner! Look at that! There you go! It was the 7660 inverter. No antenna unit. Oh, we can fix that. Alright, let's try the whole thing now. Sony GPS receiver. Wait in acquisition. Well, we'll be waiting for a while for the acquisition there um, because I'm in the middle of a concrete building here. Don't even have any windows to uh, look out from. But there you go. That is, uh, that is fixed, and of course we can flip that over and measure that. Good measure, just make sure that's fixed. Got our 5 volts going in. And bingo, minus 4.7, good enough for Australia, coming out. Beauty. So I was a bit curious as to exactly what was going on with this 7660, and I traced it out, and this is what I got, pin 4 is the plus 5 volts that we measured on the other uh, main board down here at that uh, test point. Pin 8 is actually the ground that we measured on the other uh, test point, the negative of the battery. And 5 and 6 is the switching cap. And, and then, oh, sorry, I forgot to have the minus, oops, minus 5 volts there. Um, and then we've got a resistor between 2 and 3 here, and one's not connected, so... Now, because we found two faulty caps on there, looks like we've fixed the problem. Um, I would also suspect the third one, but if you're going to do that, then, well, you got to start suspecting everything over on this GPS receiver as well. A lot of them might have come from the same batch. Are they the same... Value 22s, yeah, it could be. Um, they could have, like, even you know, come from the same reel. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't be trusting those. So, yeah, anyway, we fixed the problem, which is what we wanted to do. We wanted to track that down, but just be aware that you could actually go further and uh, test that. And I'd have to take it outside and test the GPS, which I might do actually and see if it works. Um, and yeah, well. Okay, I'll put it back together. All right, I'll go outside. Need some vitamin D anyway. Looks like it's a four-channel receiver. We've got four satellites on there. Not getting anything in here, but look at this. It was... <laughs> um, a lock could take 20 to 30 minutes for the initialization. You wouldn't want to be in a hurry. Check it out. Looks like we have a lock on number seven. Lucky seven. And that's what L stands for. So the others have yet to... Lock in, oh, come on, you can do it. All right, what I'm gonna do is initialize the receiver because uh, it could have last been on the other side of the planet. In fact, it was. Um, so, uh, yes, clear, recall. Uh, what do I do? Yes, clear, clear. Okay, it's certainly changed uh, satellite numbers now, so we'll see what happens. No, tried another set and uh, doesn't seem to be picking up anything. I only managed to get that one, so I'm not sure what's uh, going on. Anyway, I think it's about to start to rain here. I might have to get back indoors. So there you have it. I was able to actually get lock onto one satellite, so I'm not actually sure what's going on here with this four-channel system and how the initialization works and stuff like that. The manual does say it can take up to 30 minutes, but I'm, I'm going to call that a relative win. If it can lock onto one satellite, then it's at least kind of doing the business. The receiver's still kind of working, and it wouldn't show um, that if it wouldn't, uh, if it didn't actually get the data and was able to lock onto that one satellite anyway. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that little uh, troubleshooting thing. Thank you very much uh, to Dave for sending that one in. That was interesting. We at least fixed it as far as the fault that we wanted to fix, which was the LCD uh, display that turned out to be the good old capacitor, electrolytic capacitor again, um, as we've seen in previous videos. Often you're not that lucky though. It could have been an LCD driver or something like that, but unlikely 
that it was from the get-go was most likely to be something relatively simple like that. Could have been the LCD itself, old age, uh, might have, you know, um, something might have happened to it or something like that. But my initial guess, like the bias voltage and stuff like that driving the LCD, so that negative uh, rail that they were getting there, that was doing some of that business. So there you go. Um, yeah, I could trace it further, as I suspect. You might suspect other caps on the board, so as a matter of course, you might rip them off, test them, things like that. But as I said, there were plenty in this receiver here. And, well, this thing is, uh, what, 25 years old? So, yeah, it's not a real useful GPS anymore. But, eh, interesting. So I hope you enjoyed that little uh, troubleshooting video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up as always links to the forum to discuss it down below or just leave it in the youtube or blog comments catch you next time hi check out what i saved from the dumpster a classic hewlett packard 1740a 100 megahertz dual channel analog scope oh the centerfolds look at the centerfold look at this wow <laughs> metal can socketed uh flush with the board Fantastic. And here's another good example why it's uh, not a bad idea to have a couple of multimeters lying around 